Chapter 2 Mr. Fox On a hill above the valley there was a wood. In the wood there was a huge tree. Under the tree there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Well, my darling, what be this time? A plump chicken from Boggins? A duck or a goose from Bunce? Or a nice turkey from Bean? And when Mrs. Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. Boggus and Bunce and Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. But Mr. Fox was too clever for them. He always approached the farm with the wind blowing in his face. And this meant, if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr. Fox's nose from far away. Thus, if Mr. Boggus was hiding behind his chicken house number one, Mr. Fox would smell him out from 50 yards off and quickly change direction, heading for chicken house number four at the other end of the farm. Dang and blast that beast, cried Boggus. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Bunce. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Boggus, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose delicately with a long finger. I have a plan, he said. You've never had a decent plan yet, said Bunce. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night, we will all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives. Lives. We will wait there until he comes out. Then bang, 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 bang. Very clever, said Bunce. But first, we shall have to find the hole. My dear Bunce, I've already found it, said the crafty bean. It's up in the wood, on the hill. It's under a huge tree.